We all know that patients with stage 5 chronic kidney disease, I mean end stage renal disease, have two options. One of them is renal replacement therapy. Renal replacement therapy includes on the top transplantation, then the efficient peritoneal dialysis, and lastly, hemodialysis. Due to a cause or another, unfortunately, in our country, patients on hemodialysis outnumber those on peritoneal dialysis or transplantation. So we can say that most, and this is very important, most of the patient with end stage renal disease in our beloved country have two options. One of them is hemodialysis. And we all know that for hemodialysis, the vascular axis is crucial. So we can say that most of the patients with end stage renal disease in our beloved country have either to have a vascular axis for hemodialysis as a form of renal replacement therapy. Otherwise, they will have the other option. They are going to be left to die. I think that it is a very annoying sense that the patient is going to die. For the patient and for the surgeon who is helping the patient and can't do nothing. So the words save access, save life is true words. My target now is changing your concept. I am not talking about salving, salvage of an axis. No. I want to change your concept from salvage of an axis to axis maintenance. Axis maintenance starts usually from creation to cessation. But the challenge here that axis salvage starts early before creation and late after cessation, and the term is no more salvage. It is called maintenance. Here are the items of maintenance of AV access, and I'm going to focus on this point for the sake of time. Salvage of AV access. I mean the failing and failed AV access. What is going on? In the near past and even till now, when we have a failing axis, forget about it totally and create a new one. What happens? We have exhausted axes over time and we will end by no available access for hemodialysis. So, salvage of an axis should be on the top priority. Why? Because it saves other veins and it buys some time. How to do this? How to do salvage? These are the options. Of course, the endovascular option is on the top of the armamentarium. And you have to know that this can be done not only for obliterative lesions, but also for aneurysmal lesions and whatever the thrombus load is. Can you tell me why endovascular salvage is in the top of the armamentarium? Yes. It is minimally invasive. We have no operation like doing a new fistula superficialization, AV graft, and so. And it can tackle different lesions, not only in the venous side, but also in the arterial side, in the anastomosis, in the veins, even in the central veins. If we have central venous lesion, this limb totally is of, out of use for AV access. And the fistula can be used the second day after salvage by endovascular technique. And we don't need to put double human catheter. And it has a very good patency rate. And if re-occluded, the procedure can be repeated. Is endovascular salvage suitable for every fistula? What do you think? The answer is, so long as there is no infection, there is no systemic low flow state, Yes, it is suitable for every fistula. And these exclusion criteria are also exclusion for creation of new fistula. Is it an easy job or difficult job? What's your opinion? 
I think it's an easy job. You can have an angel suite, and if you have no angel suite, you can do it duplex guided. And the four points that should be done to salvage an access by endovascular technique is to get an endovascular access, to do and interpret angiogram, to cross the lesion, then to dilate it. Let's see this. This is a patient coming to our clinic complaining that his axis stopped today. And he don't want to put W in catheter. This is the angiogram. Do you see any vein? No vein. Just with tilting the projection, we have a small nibble here. We succeeded to go through by the wire and dilate the lesion. And this is a photo after dilating the lesion. And the artery is no more seen here and only the vein which is seen. What about the cost? The cost can be minimized by using certain tools, short in length, short shaft, short wires. And even if they are costly to some extent, they are not more expensive than the patient life. Are there any complications in doing endovascular salvage for a failed fistula? Yes. No procedure without complications. But all the complications are controllable. The most serious complication is pulmonary embolism. But when we are confronted with a moderate or heavy thrombus load, we don't do endovascular procedure alone. We combine endovascular plus thrombectomy, I mean hybrid technique. Is it successful? Yes, technical success, radiological success, clinical success, mounting from 80 to 90 percent. If we don't have the option to do endovascular, is there a role for other modalities to salvage the fistula? Yes. What's your opinion? This is an example for radiocephalic AV fistula, which is occluded due to anastomotic line stenosis or juxta anastomotic stenosis. If we do re-anastomosis here, do you consider it new fistula or salvage of the old fistula? What's your opinion? New one or salvage? It is still salvage because it is still radiocephalic and we use the same vein which is already mature. My target is not only to defend for salvage, but to change the concept from salvage of an axis to maintenance of an axis, which start early before creation to late after cessation. And my second target is to put fistula salvage on the top priority before thinking in doing a new one to save other veins, to save time for dialysis, and to save patient's life, and to put on the top of the armamentarium using the endovascular technique, whether alone or combined with open surgery when there is moderate or heavy thrombus load. Thank you very much for your attention.